All right. Uh, help me to welcome Tim Schreffler, our presenter today. Tim is the tech technology coordinator for ITT. He supports various instructional technologies that are employed in traditional blended and online courses here at APU, as well as helping faculty in their use of Sakai and the Google Apps. Tim is also one of the spearheads for any of our multimedia projects and mobile learning initiatives. Welcome, Tim. Thanks a lot, Terry. Um, so I'm going to start off this um, webinar with a, a short presentation, and then I'm going to get into uh, demonstrating notability. Um, kind of the, the main uh, subject we're talking about today is annotating PDFs, um, but I'm also going to be covering uh, note taking, uh, note organization, um, some use cases for um, note taking and using notability in the classroom. Um, and I'm going to be presenting this all from my iPad. Uh, Notability is an iPad and Mac only uh, application. It is a paid application. Um, so I don't expect everybody to have it, but if you do have it, please try to follow along. So I'm going to go ahead and get started now. I'm going to switch um, to my iPad here. All right. So um, I'm going to go through a short, pre short presentation just kind of explaining what Notability does and um, some of its features. Um, so again, Notability is a, a Mac, iPhone, or iPad application. Um, if you go to gingerlabs.com or search Notability in Google, uh, you can find their website. Um, you can purchase this on the Mac App Store or the iTunes App Store. It, it is a little bit more of an expensive app. It is a $10 app. Um, but I, I found it on sale um, for 99 cents uh, sometimes when it's a, a featured app. So it, it is something that you can get for a good price. Um, but I, I also think it's worth um, $10. I, I think it's, it's very feature rich and it can do a lot of things. So I'm going to play a little video here. Um, Apple has recently featured Notability in one of their commercials. So hopefully you can hear this. So you can see that that's a little video kind of um, showing some of the features of Notability and, and playing on um, kind of the, the comedy of note taking, but also uh, showing, you know, giving features that like lecture recording and um, uh, synchronizing your notes to your lecture recordings um, to be able to do some, some very feature rich things in Notability. Okay, let's see if I can get out of here. Um, so some use cases for Notability um, is document annotation, like I mentioned before. Um, you could uh, ultimately get to a paperless cast classroom using Notability and Google Drive. Um, you could uh, use, you could share the notes with students as well as share your lecture material with students um, in, a, in a Notability form. Uh, you could have students record your lecture or even um, pre-record your lecture and share it with your students uh, before or after you give your presentation. Um, the, the notes are synced with the recordings that um, are done in Notability, and, and I'll show that in the demonstration. It's a little hard to explain, but as you uh, record audio and take notes, you can backtrack and, and click on the notes inside of Notability, and the audio will snap to where you've taken your notes. It's a, it's a great feature. And then lastly is um, organizing your notes. You know, uh, Notability gives you a lot of features for organization, um, and this could be on the student side or the teacher's side. Um, with document annotation, uh, Notability is a, a powerful PDF annotation tool. Uh, you could use annotations for grading or feedback. Um, you could, you know, you could load students' assignments or papers directly into your iPad. Uh, you could import them in, which I will show you how to do. Is it's very easy. You could import from both the internet or from Google Drive, or even from um, Sakai. Um, you could uh, create templates for your assignments and uh, have students um, fill out their assignments and, and uh, participate 
uh, in their assignments directly on their iPad and then uh, submit their assignments back to you in, in a form that you could open up on your iPad and grade directly. So you all could be uh, both, the students could both uh, be creating their content in Notability as well as you could be creating and uh, sending feedback in Notability um, by, by simply editing uh, PDFs. You know, you could have uh, PDF templates that you've created for your students uh, for an, a particular an assignment and you could have them uh, fill out that assignment on Notability and then have them return that assignment through Google Drive. Um, and it's a great way to use Notability. Oops. I, and again, I talked about a paperless classroom. Um, I'm going to just kind of briefly touch on how, how that could be done in Notability. And it, it's basically by creating a shared location between you and your students. Um, for example, using Google Drive uh, to create, create individual folders for your students. Um, you could upload uh, lecture material or assignment material to a, a central Google Drive folder that is shared with all of your students. They could download your material onto their iPads, uh, fill out the material on their iPad, and then return the material to Google Drive for you to download and um, annotate yourself. Um, you know, this is a great way to organize content for your class. Um, this is a great way to kind of centralize all their assignments and, and uh, papers. And I, I, th I think it's helpful and it it's eliminates things like email communication back and forth for assignment submission and uh, things that can become cumbersome like that. Um, again, I, I think one of Notability's best features is the ability to record audio. Um, Teachers could provide audio feedback on assignments if they were grading uh, a PDF in Notability, or students could um, record the lecture as they're taking notes um, inside your class. And like I mentioned before, the, the notes um, with audio recorded over them results in kind of this timeline effect that can be uh, referred back to uh, when studying. And finally, uh, Notability is a, a great organizational tool. It, it allows you to uh, file your notes in folders. Um, you can rename the folders and, and organize the folders uh, very well. And it, um, I, you know, you could have a student could or a teacher could have um, each one of their uh, courses as a file folder, um, or even you know drill it down even more and have um, particular case studies in a, in a particular file. Um, as well as students could have each one of their courses in a separate folder. Um, so kind of one of the first things I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to talk about it a little bit before I do, is importing PDFs into Notability because I think this is kind of the, um, the single most feature that uh, we should use the most when, when trying to do some of these use cases. Um, so to import notes or PDFs, um, it's it's as simple as finding the PDF on the internet, uh, saving uh, your content as a PDF, maybe in uh, Adobe Acrobat, or uh, using Google Drive to create PDFs or save PDFs, uh, which is very easy. You could convert your documents and PowerPoints into PDFs inside of Google Drive. This is a feature that Google Drive has, um, and then uh, easily access them inside of Notability. So I'm going to start to move on to the demonstration of some of the things um, that I've talked to before. Um, feel free to submit your questions in the chat. Um, and then once I'm done with the, the, the demonstration, um, I will field those questions and we'll, we'll have a conversation about um, what I've talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Notability app um, and just kind of, you know, give you a first look when you, when you open up the app. Uh, you can see I have on the left-hand side um, my folders. Uh, I, I have my folders kind of uh, scrunched into three main topics of um, demo materials, training materials, and uh, my miscellaneous notes. Again, this could be um, you know your your 200-level uh, classes, your 400-level classes, and your 500-level classes could be here. You could uh, make your file folders your individual classes. You know. EDUC 572, EDUC 573, and EDUC um, 571 or something like that. Um, it, it's all up to you. you know, it, it's simple as uh, creating, you know, creating subjects and uh, creating uh, different groups to uh, put 
to organize your notes in. Uh, so before I start, I'm going to kind of talk about some note organization here. Um, if you and I'm going to kind of go from left and right uh, when we're talking about some of the buttons on Notability. Uh, this first button is the edit button. This allows you to kind of drag your notes around. You can see I can select some notes and I could kind of drag them into these different um, folders here. Uh, I could select all my notes at once and move them to a different folder uh, or one at a time. I can also rename all my uh, items here in the edit view as well as delete items. Um, the this, the uh, edit button also gives you the ability to kind of change these folders up and you can, you can see I can change the name, the color of the folder, as well as I could even um, password protect the folder in case, you know, it was some sensitive material that I'd, um, if I didn't have a password on my iPad, maybe I could protect this at the app level. Um, and then I, I, I've brought there's a, there's a few other buttons here for sharing and um, exporting your notes, um, but the main buttons I want to talk about now are on the right-hand side. Um, the, the search button uh, is pretty self-explanatory. You can search all of your notes uh, down to the content within your notes. Um, this little button is the import button. Uh, this allows you to import content from Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, sorry, this is a little hard to see right here. Um, this, the second option is Google Drive, and I will, I will be just um, demonstrating how to import content from Google Drive in a second. And then the, the, the last button over here is the create a new note. So the second I hit that, it timestamps my note, brings up my keyboard if I wanted to type since I, I have the type tool selected, um, or I could also start um, handwriting notes. So I'm going to go back and Okay, now I'm going to open up kind of notabilities. Um, Notability has created a note uh, called the welcome note uh, it, that everybody has when uh, you download Notability. And I think this is a great way to show off uh, the tools of Notability. So the tools I'm going to be talking about are the six tools at the top here, the type tool, the pen tool, the highlighter tool, the eraser tool, the scissor tool, and the hand tool. And then I'll talk about the record button and the back button um, as well. So the first button is a, a, a typing tool, um, pretty self-explanatory. You know, you have a, um, some, some text editing options. You can change the font, change the size of the font, the color. Um, you could bold, indent, or underline the font, as well as save some presets over here. This A, B, and C is um, some font presets. Um, you can see I can kind of scroll quickly snap to some different kinds of fonts here. Um, and, and the the type tool um, is used both for uh, bringing, uh, obviously bringing text into your notes, but also bringing um, photos or videos or any kind of media into your notes. So you can hit the type tool, hit the plus button over here and edit or import um, photos into your, your notes. Oops. So I'm going to kind of just scroll through this note here. Um, so the, the first note talks about the hand tool, which is the, uh, the navigation school. Sorry, I called it the, something a little bit different. Um, but this, this tool is simply to scroll through the document. Um, I, I can kind of use uh, my fingers as uh, if I was selecting on a pen tool, I can use my fingers uh, with two fingers to scroll through a document. But if you want to make sure that you're not going to be editing things, you're not going to be drawing or moving around text, you click the navigate tool and you can simply, uh, simply scroll through the document. Again, I talked about adding photos here. This is, this is talking about importing a photo into your uh, document. Uh, it tells you that you could uh, annotate over images. You could write, hand write directly on your photos. Um, the, the ink, uh, portion is is probably the, the the coolest feature of Notability. The the pencil um, has kind of a smoothing effect. So the the app is doing some of the thinking for you as you draw the pencil. Um, if your handwriting is a little sloppy, it it smooths over the the um, the ink. It it makes it easier to read, um, and it's a great tool. It there there's some algorithms and and um, extra stuff going on when you're, when you're using the pencil tool that really makes it look nice. Uh, the er eraser tool is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Click it, 
you can kind of uh, swipe over things and quickly erase them. And display the pencil tool here. You see, it's just a, a simple um, drawing tool. Uh, of course, there's a highlighter tool, a, a great tool for annotating that allows you to kind of quickly uh, highlight stuff. Um, and then the scissors tool is a great tool as well, which really gives you the ability to kind of edit and uh, move around any object. So you can see I can scale these objects. Um, I could delete these objects. I could move them around to exactly where I wanted. You can see I could uh, copy um, or, or cut them or delete them. And this is kind of the, the Photoshop level tools allowing you to edit your document in any way by uh, circling, circling them and then uh, manipulating the object. You can see you can rotate, scale, move, cut, copy, and paste, all with the scissor tool. Uh, finally, the, the recording tool. You can see the recording tool kind of up in the top right corner here. When I click on the recording tool, it begins to record my voice. I can quickly um, go back Turn up the volume here. Recording tool, it begins to record my voice. Um, so it, it's very self-explanatory. Um, like I said, uh, if I was using the recording tool uh, simultaneously with like the, the type or the pencil tool, um, anywhere I, I had typed during that audio recording, I could click on that when I was in this kind of timeline view of the audio recording. I could click there and it would snap to um, where I had re uh, recorded audio as I was taking that note. All right, so that, that's it for the notability document. Um, so now I'm gonna try to talk about a, a few use cases um, that I've found um, uh, specifically for teachers and faculty members um, inside of notability. Um, some of this content is from uh, the PT department. Um, so, excuse me one sec while I navigate. Um, so right here um, are some PowerPoints uh, for the first week uh, of a, a PT course. Um, I think this course was functional anatomy. Um, and you can see that this professor has uh, has four slide presentations. Uh, we have the connective tissue presentation, connective tissues and bones presentation, a, a muscle tissue presentation, and a nerve tissue presentation. Um, but as well, um, this professor has exported um, each presentation um, with a, a, a note, um, you know, has exported their PowerPoint um, in the, with a, a note uh, PDF as well. And um, I, I see that as something that could be quickly and easily imported into Notability. You could share the, the, um, the PowerPoint note um, view with your students before class. You could um, present your lecture um, with your, your PowerPoint here. You could go through it um, during class time. And students could be actively taking notes on your PowerPoint notes, uh, seeing the slides um, on the left-hand side and taking notes on the right hand side. So here's a, a quick example of that. Um, and and the, there wasn't anything fancy to write small like this. Um, you know, I, I simply kind of zoomed in to, to the, the lines. Um, it's a little hard for me to write here. And began writing uh, with, with my pencil tool. Uh, that's a little thick. So I'm just kind of using my normal handwriting. Um, the Apple Pencil really helps um, with uh, kind of replicating what it would, would be like to, to write on pen and paper. You can see it, it is very easy for me to, to write kind of in these bounds. I could take maybe a, a short paragraph of notes uh, in this little section. Uh, 
and all, all of which um, I could be recording the audio uh, while the professor was speaking. I could be writing uh, simultaneously. Um, and then I can go back and reference. You can see as, as I kind of scroll over these notes, you can see uh, the notes uh, displaying as well as I could um, click on the note and reference uh, where I had taken that audio. Uh, simultaneously, I could be writing uh, simultaneously. And you can see how powerful of a feature that is for um, note taking. You know that. As students were um, recording your lecture and taking notes, um, when it came time to study for uh, a final or for maybe a short quiz on this this uh, particular lecture, um, there's no need to kind of search through their notes. They 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 reference their notes, hear what the the uh, faculty member was saying at the time of taking those notes, and um, it, it's a great way for studying. Um, as for um, faculty use on this, you know, you could be preparing for your lecture and maybe practicing um, uh, what you're going to say or um, kind of freehanding what you're going to say by uh, verbally kind of uh, thinking about what you're going to say. And you, you could write down some notes at the same time or, or even um, annotate uh, your PDF, say if um, here's a slideshow. Um, I could practice going over my lecture. Um, kind of thinking about what I might annotate over my presentation or, or even um, using these annotations for, for uh, personal reference to think to kind of uh, note what I, I want to emphasize in my lectures and I could use the uh, audio recording tool as I maybe um, highlighted some of these features and then that would be saved in my uh, audio recording. Um, another example of some some handwriting that I've done on the iPad. Um, you can see, you know, I, zooming in, I can kind of write in a in a normal handwriting, and then as I zoom out, um, you know, you can kind of infinitely zoom in. I could zoom in uh, close and and write. Get a little smaller here. And have my notes. You know, I could use an entire page of of uh, of the notability tool and and write almost a full page uh, as I would on an eight and a half uh, by eleven sheet. So finally, I'm going to kind of talk about um, the annotating features of notability. Um, I'm going to use a a uh, a document that uh, me and my supervisor prepared for a, a conference a while back and just kind of show some uh, some easy annotation features. And again, uh, I think the best annotation feature um, and the best, uh, again, the best feature of notability is that recording tool. So if a, a, teach, a student had submitted this paper to me and I um, had imported in, which I'm going to uh, show you now. So I'm going to go back into the the uh, home page of Notability. I'm going to click this import tool. I'm going to click the Google Drive tool. And so I, I signed into Google Drive uh, ahead of time. Um, it, it shows a mirror image of all my file structure in Google Drive. Um, I'm going to navigate to something that I want to download. Say maybe if students had submitted um, their content in a, in a file folder that I had already set up for them. I could go back and into that Google Drive uh, file folder and then access them inside of Notability. So I'm going to kind of just click on this PDF at the top here and it's going to download it. Um, it's going to show me a little preview and ask me if I'd like to create a new note. It shows me all the pages. I could, I, I could deselect some pages if I, if I didn't want to import all this content over. Um, down here I could select where I'd like this note to be uh, imported into. 
and then I'm going to click the import button. Let's see, it, it says it's uh, imported it into the, the my training folder. I'm going to click open. And so that the document that I just showed, I've now uh, imported it from Google Drive. Um, say you wanted to import something uh, from the internet. So I, I have a, a um, PDF brought up in Chrome here. Um, and you can see this is a, a PDF file, uh, file that's uh, being displayed inside of Chrome right now. On the iPad, if I, if I tap on uh, the, present, or the PDF once, a little uh, box down here that says open in comes up. Uh, it now gives me the ability to import uh, this PDF into any of my applications. I could save it in Google Drive for maybe importing into Notability later, or I could just import it directly into Notability. It says it's, it's sent it into Notability. I'm gonna go ahead and um, navigate back over here. And it, the import function's happening on the back end. I'm gonna create a new note now. Maybe uh, deselect some of the pages that I don't need. Maybe I just wanna read the report later on and annotate over it. And then I'm gonna click import, I'll wait for it to load, open it up. And now I, I have the ability to um, annotate over this PDF, highlight some of the, the things that I might wanna reference later. Um, I could quickly scroll through, use the pencil tool to, to highlight different areas or to write over different areas, maybe make some notes on the side of uh, either one of the column a little bit thicker so we can see it. I can maybe write some some text. Maybe we might need, I need to make it a little smaller here. And see that you could easily um, annotate uh, PDFs that were submitted to you. Um, you could annot uh, annotate um, and um, save some of your references. Maybe if you were um, preparing a case study or, or um, preparing for uh, some research. Let me open back up uh, my my document here. And you know, if this this was a double spaced, you could uh, type text in between. Uh, the the student submitted work. Maybe make it red text to kind of show some contrast. It's a little bit easier to see here. You can see how easy it is for me to kind of switch between these tools um, using a pen tool or the highlighter tool. Um, or if I think I got um, all these annotations wrong, I can use the eraser tool and kind of quickly just swipe over all my annotations and um, have them be deleted. Of course, there's, there's always the undo button too to kind of quickly bring back um, those annotations. And if you um, press and hold, I think, on the undo button, you can also redo, which is a great feature. Um, kind of lastly, um, just to kind of talk about a few note-taking uh, features of Notability, let me open up a, a new document here. Um, there's this little plus button down in the bottom right hand corner. And then um, when I, uh, as a student, uh, and I, when I use Notability to take notes in class, uh, this was the feature I used the most. So this feature, um, this box up in the top right corner um, is the same thing as this box down in here. It's just, this box is a zoomed in view. 
as I write um, in the in the larger box at the bottom here, the text is automatically written, you know, in in the zoomed in uh, in the zoomed out view over here, and I can continue to write. You know, you can see it kind of snaps over. Um, once once I've uh, gotten over to the right hand side into snap, I can also kind of hit the return button to snap down to the next line. And this is, uh, you can see kind of the, some of the tools kind of drop down and so I can access them easily here. And this is a great way to take notes. Um, so as you take the, your notes, it's organizing it in, in a, a linear fashion. Um, it's already doing the zoom in and for you, so you don't have to physically zoom in on, on the document and try to write as small as you can. Um, you could use the bottom uh, portion of your screen and easily um, annotate or uh, write or even type content. Um, I've, I've found some some great resources on uh, Notability's website, gingerlabs.com, in, the, in their support pages. Um, so there's some documentation about flipping your classroom using Notability. Um, and of course, I, I've touched on a lot of the things that um, they do talk about in these documents. But uh, feel free to reference this material later, as well as I, I will send this material out um, at the end of this webinar. Um, there, there's some uh, guides for recording uh, notes and notability. Um, you know, teachers could provide audio feedback on assignments completed in notability to provide a deeper connections with students and enhance uh, learning experiences. Uh, there's a guide on the paperless classroom and how to create a paperless classroom using notability. And, and these techniques could be, be applied to um, a number of tools on both the iPad and the computer. You know, this, this could be applied to Sakai, this could be applied to Google Drive, um, this could be applied to Google Docs. And it, as well as there's a, a, a quick organization document um, showing a little um, graphic on how, let's see if I could zoom in on that how a good example of organizing um, content. Of course, this is on the student side. Um, these, the student has organized his cart content uh, by his current courses and even archived some of his, of his old content. So I think that's about all I have for my uh, demonstration. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, have Terry come back and help with some of the, the questions that have been asked in the chat. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to go down the list here. Some of the questions that you had. Uh, Tammy just had a quick question, Tim, um, about the audio, uh, the snap audio feature wanting to know, is that a new feature with Notability? I think it is one of the newer features. Um, mm -hmm. When I recorded audio um, as a student, that, that feature was not available, but a, okay. that was a good five years ago kind of thing. Okay, good. Um, but I, I, I do think it's one of their newer features, yes. Okay. It looks like Tammy's using this already uh, with a fourth and fifth grade uh, special ed classroom. So Tammy, thanks for sharing that. Um, Christina asked, and I think I answered this properly, the, uh, the eye pencil is only uh, usable on the iPad. It, you can't use it on your Mac. Mac yes, the, the Apple Pencil is only um, usable on the iPad Pro actually. Oh, okay. okay. So it, it is a little bit of a, a limited uh, use, um, but I, I have a, I, I've bought styluses in the past. This stylus right. is called, um, let me show you, called the Cosmonaut. And it's, this is a $20 stylus um, as opposed to the $100 stylus that the uh, Apple Pencil is. And I, I found the exact same functionality out of this. Um, this is, it's a little bulky, but it's weighted and it has a good tip on it. And it, it feels like I'm holding a marker or something um, that I'm already used to writing with. And the Apple Pencil kind of gives you a, a similar feeling. It's the, the the shape size and weight of a normal pencil so it that kind of makes it easier to write with but I, I don't think it's necessary to go buy an Apple Apple pencil okay would you recommend searching uh, maybe Amazon for the best deal on yeah on absolutely okay. both okay. of these products were bought on Amazon okay perfect um, <clears throat> let's see Christina asked this and I think you covered this but but just to double check this is do the notes get to be stored electronically 
and searchable after. So yes, they all the notes are stored um, uh, physically on your iPad, um, but they're also you can also export those notes um, pretty easily. You know, inside of a note here, um, I could click the export function. I could email it to myself. I could save it back into Google Drive. I, I could even print it. Uh, as well as share it with anybody, you know, I could share a PDF, um, I could share the recording, um, or share the note as a whole in, in a, the proprietary, proprietary uh, notability form format. Okay. Um, I, I think one of the, the questions Penny had uh, is she kind of missed this part when you did it. Could you demo how to import from the internet? She said, yeah. you can only go to Google Drive and, and maybe she was missing a step. Yeah. So here's a, another document that I have on the internet. This is um, from Educause's uh, eCar library. And, um, you know, I, I've, let me go back and show you kind of my process for it. So, I, you know, I found this PDF on the internet. Um, I downloaded the PDF and then I clicked once um, on the PDF and clicked this open in button on the bottom right. That's kind of, now it's downloading it. It's um, trying to figure out where um, I can now import this into, this is a little bit of a larger PDF, but then now I have the option to um, copy this into Google Drive, I could email this, okay. I could um, import it directly into Notability. Perfect. Penny's shaking her head yes, so that's good. <laughs> um, Christina, I'm going to ask you, would you unmute your microphone and then ask the question, because I think I know what you're asking, but I'd rather you ask it in, in your words so I don't misinterpret. So I can, uh, so the issue is that as I'm making notations, I can take those notations, copy them and paste them on another document. So I have a summary of edited content from other different articles and then I have that available as I do research, correct? Mm -hmm. And then can export it, print it, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. You know, right now I, I you know, I do it by, you know, um, control, what's it, shift, um, whatever, you know, the number, shift, uh -huh. control, commit, you know, four, so I copy and I can download some things, it's an, or I just copy and paste with my Mac, but um, this looks like a great way to do it and have it more portable. Yeah, it, it, more portable as well as the, the ability to save directly to Google Drive or to even, you know, I could... You could even airdrop uh, that content back to your Mac and, uh -huh. um, and use that content on, on your computer in Adobe Acrobat or something like that. Sure, sure. But it's, it sounds like um, having the ability to use this with the iPad Pro really is the way to go. I, I think so. I think uh, using it on the iPad in general, even if it's not an iPad Pro, is, is the best way to go. Just um, the ability to manipulate PDFs as well as to kind of touch them with your finger or draw over them. I, everything that I did with the pencil, I could also do with my finger. It, it, it's not like the pencil is bringing some kind of special features um, into Notability. Maybe the one special feature that the, the stylus brings is kind of you, you can rest your palm um, on the iPad and, and draw or write at the same time. And that's about the only special feature that everything else can be done um, with a finger. Uh, one of the things is there are so much more uh, reinforcing taking notes writing as opposed to typing to help the brain remember and so I'm just trying to reinforce that with students so be good to know. And, and I think beforehand taking notes with a stylus on, on an iPad what wasn't intuitive it wasn't something that you could do just as fast as um, handwriting notes um, but with with some of the advances of, of the iPad and especially with a, a stylus like the Apple Pencil, it, it becomes, I, I cannot distinguish between handwriting on a, a piece of paper and writing on my iPad. I can do, I, I might be able to even write faster on the iPad uh, than on, um, with a, a pen and paper. Um, Tammy has a, a question here and I think I know the answer to it. Um, she said, I used to be able to send directly from Notability to Schoology, which was the LMS uh, platform, uh, because they had an iPad app. I, I know it's not possible with Sakai, but Tim, do you know if either one of the two uh, platforms that we're testing right now have any uh, LTI or other connectability? 
yeah, I, th I think just the simple fact of if the LMS had a, a native iPad app, you would have the ability to um, take that content from Notability and put right. it into the LMS. So it, Canvas has a native uh, app, Brightspace um, has an app as well. And so I, I, I do think there's the ability to take your, your um, iPad content and put it on to the LMS. Perfect, on your perfect. IPad. Uh, one thing that I did want to uh, remind everyone and share with you, if you do not yet own uh, an iPad or you want to upgrade or you'd like that pencil, uh, we did get an email um, earlier this week from um, the computer store and they are having a one day faculty staff sale. Um, they did not release yet the actual items, but watch for that because I've bought some really great things over there uh, with a really good discount. So this might be a time to um, Take some of that tax return money if you've got it. <laughs> uh, if you got a birthday coming up, Mother's Day's coming up, uh, Father's Day's in June. Um, so look into that and see if there might be some of these um, upgrades that you'd like to uh, use as you get more comfortable using um, just the, the technology that we're demoing here. Um, does anybody have any last question or comment they'd like to um, type in before we close? If not, we have recorded this session. Uh, Tim will upload it to our CTLA webpage. I uh, want to thank you again for joining us. Look forward to other uh, demos coming up in the near future. Uh, we'll be doing some other activities between now and the end of the term. So please watch for our emails and notifications for different events. We'd love to have you here in person with us when possible. Yes, thank you so much for everybody for joining us um, this afternoon. Um, it, if you have any questions about anything we've talked about or anything um, technology related, please email us at ittsupport at apu.edu. Um, and those, those questions would be uh, forwarded to me and I'd be happy to respond to them. So again, thank you so much for your attendance today and have a good, great weekend. Thanks everyone.